Hi everybody, Jimmy Newland here. Let's talk about the design recipe and Python. So why a design recipe? You can actually follow a series of steps that will hopefully turn a problem into something that you can solve more easily and also test your uh, algorithm immediately and know whether or not it worked as advertised. So I have an example, the area of a circle. So notice that I have the function name up there, immediately followed by something called the data contract, immediately followed by a clear description, and then before I even gotten down to the algorithm, I've got some examples here, and then there's the algorithm, and then at the very bottom you'll notice there are tests, which are just uh, the algorithm, I mean the uh, uh, examples, simply repeated. You'll notice that lines two through nine are a doc comment, or doc string, excuse me, type of comment in Python. And when I run this, you can see I get this output over here and I can immediately see that I got the things I wanted to see. So let's do another example of this. Let's, so what's the problem we want to solve? That's actually the starting point. In fact, that should be where the, the bulk of your thinking happens. And it's very likely that that's not going to be a short process. It's not going to be something that you can start on a computer. You may need a whiteboard. You may want to sit down with someone and have a conversation. The figuring out exactly what your problem is is probably the hardest part of the entire deal. So, all right, I have a good description. Convert Fahrenheit temperature to Celsius return the new calculated value. Seems straightforward. And so let's give some examples. Uh, and I thought about this a little bit ahead of time. A zero Celsius is 33 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 Celsius is 212, and negative 40 is this point when you get the same number in both systems. Notice that in my example there, I've kind of already decided on a name, so let's go ahead and use that. I'm going to define my function as far to cell, and I'm going to call my input parameter, which is going to be uh, the input value, and it could be we need to talk about the, the data type as well, but this is going to be a number. So now it's actually a good start. I've got the name of my function. The very next thing I need to do is make sure I have a contract. The contract is a way for me to say, all right, as the programmer, if you give me Fahrenheit as a Fahrenheit, if you give me Fahrenheit as a floating point number, I promise to give you back the Celsius value, if I can spell it as a floating point number. And I'm only, I wrote those words in there only to demonstrate that my thinking had to happen there. It may not end up in the final process, but I'm thinking, okay, the Fahrenheit temperature is a floating point number, which means it could be a float or an integer, and the output should be a floating point number. There's a very good chance that when I use the math I have to apply that it's not gonna be an integer. So I need to make sure to, uh, I'm promising that if you give me a float, I'll give you back a float. All right, before I forget, Let's tab over our doc string, and Python is very particular about this. So the white space is important. So there, the doc string is actually lined up where it needs to be. So, okay, cool. Well, the process here is fairly straightforward. You may have to go look this up if you have forgotten. But if you take the Fahrenheit temperature and you subtract 32, and you multiply by five divided by nine, well, that's the actual value. So then I can take my, so we're going to test this and see if I did it correctly. I'm going to take my three examples and turn them into print statements. So notice I'm saying 32 should be 0, 2, 12 should be 100, negative 40 should be negative 100, I mean it should be negative 40. When I hit run, I didn't get those values. So this time I was trying to show you why the tests are actually so helpful. By you doing all of this thinking ahead of time, when you get down here to your tests and I run my algorithm, I hit run and I'm like, oh right, I forgot. The order of operations is such that I need to put the subtraction in parentheses. And if I hit run, ah, now it does what I want it to do. So the design recipe is a way for you to put all your thinking into a structured process that can be easily tested and replicated and people can trust that you have followed a procedure that they will take. You're showing them that your set of data works. They're willing to take it maybe now and apply it to a different set of data on a bigger data set and they trust that your algorithm does what it's supposed to do. I hope that's helpful.